Best Medicine Podcast with Simba. Sparking positive change in the community. Having real conversations and therapy. And you know the laughter's the best remedy. Got that heavy dose of humor for your hearts to heal. With mental health, it can't get any more real, yeah. Best Medicine Podcast. Laugh, love, learn. Best Medicine Podcast. Best Man Pod. It's your man, Simba Roar, back in this thing, thing one more time, bruh. And today, man. It's black. It's the almost the end of the Black History Month, but I just made Black History today, <laughs> man. Today, if you listen to the diagnosis, you know that all I have are special guests. Today is not no different, man. Today I have a, a living legend, the man, the myth, the legend. I have someone who's affected his community in various ways, some negative, some positive. It's a I already said uh, I want to have the the best comeback story ever. And I think this man is on his way to do it. If not, you know, if he hasn't done it yet, but I, I, I believe he'll definitely have that comeback story. So today on Best Man Pod, I have the legendary, the real Freeway Rick Ross. <laughs> Thank you, man. Thank, Thank you. you. That was the introduction. Thank you, brother. <laughs> Thank you, brother. Thank you, brother. You know who I um my intro rival is? Who is that? Your brother Sway. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I look up Sway another open cat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sway every, is Sway his, is tight. His intros get me every single time. It's like it's they're compelling and you almost forget who he's talking about. Right, right. That was dope though. You did a good job. I got to give it to you. I like it. I you see me smiling. <laughs> I appreciate it. I'm like, this dude did his homework. Yeah, I did. You know, a lot of times, you know, you go on shows and and they don't do their homework. Yeah. Especially with, with our people. Our people are not used to doing. And I guess because the school kind of <laughs> might have yeah. made us where we don't exactly. want to do no homework. Yeah, exactly. You know, because uh, uh, I was kind of the same way. You know, I didn't learn how to read and write until I was 28. Yeah. So um, I didn't like school. Right. I didn't like the subjects they taught in school. Mm-hmm. You know, I didn't care about Jack and Jill. Right. Because we didn't have no food at the house to eat. They was getting water. I didn't have water. Yeah, I didn't have no water. <laughs> yeah. Real. That's real. What do you think for the, I, I like to say, for the millions of listeners, who was Rick Ross? Oh, my God, man. It's, oof. We be here all week. Hey, trying to explain, I got time today. <laughs> trying to, hey, trying to explain this crazy motherfucker yeah, out. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to figure him out myself, right? Exactly. Sometimes he he ever showed growing, ever is ever evolving. He showed signs of a genius, mm. and then he showed signs of a complete idiot. <laughs> yeah, you hear me? You know, somebody that literally almost took a gun and put to his head, yeah. and pulled the trigger. Right. Not literally pulling it out, but in the same sense, right. you know. Uh, I look at selling drugs as me taking a gun out, putting it to my head because had I not sold drugs, a lot of the things that I went through right. with law enforcement, right. I mean, never went through it. Definitely. You know, never having uh, cops at your door with a battle ram hammered on the door. Right. You know, throwing... Uh, them flash grenades in the house right. that blow up and paralyze everybody, you know, um, not being handcuffed and tied and beating the head with a flashlight and then let the dog bite you while you handcuffed. Man. While you're helpless. Right. Uh, I know that I opened myself for that mm-hmm. when I picked up the dope sack. Right. Literally put myself back into slavery, which our ancestors have fought right. and gave their life up to get away from, I literally volunteered myself back into that system. Yeah. You know, so um, when you look at this guy, you'll be like, you did that to yourself? <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Something if somebody else put you in, yeah. in slavery, then that's one thing. But if you mm-hmm. intentionally put yourself in there, uh, you know, that's a sign of insanity. Yeah. You allow yourself 
to be at the mercy of people who don't care about you at all. Never did. Right. Is that because at that point you didn't care about yourself? That's possible. Mm -hmm. You know, I had put money first. Right. You know, and without money, I didn't care what happened to me. Yeah. You know, uh, I, I had started to value money more than I value my own life. Yeah. The life of my family members, uh, when I was sitting in prison, you know, and, and I started writing my first book, this one right here, I thought about that I put my whole family in, in jeopardy. You know, one day I was riding down the street and uh, my mom, she didn't want to move out the hood. Mm. She, she didn't want to move. She didn't want to move out oh, the hood. Oh, wow. Okay. She wanted to stay in the hood. Right. And she also wanted to keep my kids. Mm. So one day I'm riding down her street and, and I'm just passing by and I see my kids riding down on their bike. Mm. And then I'm telling myself... Man, if somebody kidnapped my kids, I'm going to tear something up. Yeah, definitely. Well, when I was in prison and I'm analyzing myself, I thought that I put my kids in jeopardy <laughs> from the line of work that I chose. Right. Had it not been for that line of work, they wouldn't have been in danger exactly. or no more danger than any other kid riding a bike down the street. Exactly. But because I was a cocaine dealer, it put them in extra danger because right. it was a thing where people were kidnapping kids and mm -hmm. wives and even the people, even the drug dealers, if right. they could catch them, right. you know, for ransom. Definitely. And uh, when I looked at it, that, that, that I was willing to sacrifice my, even my kids mm. to accomplish these foolish goals. What was your initial goal? My initial goal was, uh, <laughs> you know, I was young. I was yeah. 19, okay. 19 years old. Okay. And uh, I had old Ragnar Chevy, and I wanted to get some wheels for it. I okay. wanted to get it painted. Okay. And uh, I thought that that would be the answer to all my problems. <laughs> Just fixing the whip, huh? I thought once I fixed that whip, <laughs> that I could get all the girls I wanted. Mm. You know, I really wanted a girl then. Right. You know, like, man. Uh, my partners take me to the street races for the first time. You know, I, I played tennis before okay. they took me to the street races. Okay. But I just found out that I wasn't going to college because I couldn't read or write. Mm -hmm. So college was out. Right. So now I'm back in the hood with my friends right. who I thought was crazy because they was in the street selling PCP, yeah. stealing cars and and. and and so forth. But these are my boys. We right. went to elementary, junior high school together. But I started playing tennis and I kind of changed. Mm. So now I found myself back with them. Right. So now I'm doing the things that they was doing. And for the first time, I noticed a low rider. When I was playing tennis in high school, I never loaded. I never, yeah. I never noticed a low rider. Yeah. I didn't even know they existed. Mm. So I go up to the street races and I see these dudes and their cars is jumping <laughs> up and down and, and they got these paint jobs mm. and then they got them pretty little girls. <laughs> Always. And I said, ooh, I want one of those. Yeah. And I was talking about the whole package. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The car, the girl, yeah. you know, the whole thing. I want yeah. all of it. <laughs> and uh, that set me on a journey. Mm. And that's really how I eventually started selling drugs. That's that's wild because you go from wanting something simple as just a vehicle to amassing millions. Yeah. Just off of one thing. Yep. Yeah. That's if it wasn't if it wasn't cocaine, you would think people would be like, oh, you know, he did a great job. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I wish I would be considered as the Walmart. Yeah. LA Times. You know, LA Times. L.A. Times said that uh, I was the McDonald's of crack cocaine. Wow. wow. I sold cocaine like Walmart. Mm. You know, um, I started reading those stories about myself. You know, you know when they write, you yeah, know, yeah. you start reading the stories. Yeah. So, you know, they made me curious. Well, what did me and McDonald's do like? Yeah. What did me and Walmart do? You got now, the same business model. Now I started studying McDonald's and I started studying yeah. Walmart. So my whole mindset now is different. Right. Because I'm saying now that I wasted my talents. Mm -hmm. Like, you could have been a Walmart. You could have been McDonald's. Yeah. But you took your talents and you waste them in the streets selling cocaine where you put your life right. at risk and everybody around you life at risk. And then at the end of the day, the feds come in and take everything that you work for. You work eight years. Yeah. You stacked it up. You, you, you was diligent. You did everything you were supposed to do. And then 
they just come in and take it off from you. <laughs> and there's nothing you can do because they got the big guns. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So Walmart, McDonald's, they were doing stuff shady too. Oh, right. They were breaking laws. They still breaking laws. They still breaking laws. <laughs> <They still, they laughs> <still, they still laughs> don't get me twisted. Nobody's going in there in their building. Nobody's going to Ronald McDonald's house busting down the door. No, they're not. Because, <laughs> because they're tied in with the right people. Exactly. See, exactly. see, when you look at it, sugar is more deadly than cocaine. Definitely. Definitely. One day, we may look back in this society and look at Coca-Cola. Mm. Yeah. And Pepsi Cola, hmm. totally different, right? Because these companies have poisoned yeah. Generations. millions yeah. and millions of people. Yeah, um, legs have got cut off, mm-hmm. eyesight gone, um, because sugar's a, a, a vicious right. narcotic. But they don't account for those deaths. <laughs> They're not going to do it. Yeah. You know, it's not on me. They they chose it. They chose to drink. So they chose to do it. I mean, it was just like today, you know, with the twins who came up, you know, Mm -hmm. and um, like some people online probably thought that I was playing with him and making fun of him or whatever, which I don't care Mm -hmm. what other people think about me. Right. Because I have my own analysis of what. Mm-hmm. I'm supposed to do with my life. Right. Just right. like you have for what you're supposed to do with your life. Yeah. But what I was doing is I hadn't had an opportunity to speak to somebody who drinks constantly. Yeah. And and I smelled the alcohol on him. Definitely. I smelled it on him. So uh, I knew that I was dealing with an alcoholic. Right. You know, he was homeless. Right. Uh, apparently, he appeared to be homeless. No, he, he, they're fine. They're fine. Yeah, they, he told you. He's like, we got a big old house. Yeah, yeah, he said that. <laughs> yeah. But I didn't believe him because yeah. of his. He lived down the street. He his, lives on this block. His uh, tear, you know, yeah. his, his yeah. clothes looked mm-hmm. like he had been sleeping outside. Mm-hmm. You know, it had dog hair on yeah. it. Uh, yeah. So maybe he just get drunk and fall out and wherever yeah, exactly. he fall out at, that's where he at. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, this is his neighborhood. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but but I, I, I wanted to speak to him mm-hmm. because when I was sitting in prison and I started analyzing a lot of the information that I had right. may have came from somebody like him. Mm-hmm. You know, because a lot that's of times... That's where you were getting your wisdom from. Uh, that's where you were getting your wisdom from at the time. Yes. Right. We go into the liquor store and we talking to the guy sitting in the chair at the liquor store and he giving us game. Yeah. Because that's what he said today. He yeah. was giving game. Exactly. Now, if you can't decipher that game mm-hmm. yeah. and say, is this good game? Bad game, right? Then you wind up following somebody who main objective is to stay drunk. Yeah, and then where does that get you? Drunk. <laughs> <laughs> well, then, <laughs> yeah, definitely. You know, we all <clears throat> we all come from a place where where it's it's kind of difficult to. We come from a place where it's difficult to get out of, you know. And you said your your mother chose to stay. A lot of us wish we can leave, and we do our best to get out. And then once we make a certain amount of money, we never come back. But that's the problem. Exactly. I was trying to get out too. Mm-hmm. My mom had the best idea in a sense. Mm-hmm. The only thing she was missing is that she was supposed to make the neighborhood better. Better, yes. See, I make was trying to get out the, the neighborhood as well. Yeah. Like you said, so many of us do. But we never come back. Yeah. And what happens is we wind up leaving the other people behind who helped us climb out. Exactly. When, in actuality, we should be working to make them better. Definitely. As well. Definitely. You know? Uh, I, I like what Snoop Dogg says. Ain't no fun if the homie can't have it. Yeah. And um, when, when I hear that, I don't think he's talking about his woman. Right. You know, he's right. talking about the fun, the money, mm-hmm. the excitement, uh, the knowledge. Right. You know, we have to share that with our homies mm-hmm. because resources. If we don't, then you wind up being that one who with it. Now the whole hood resents you. There you go. You, you're not a hometown hero. There you go. You, I saw an interview with Michael B. Jordan. He was giving a speech. He said, 
is lonely at the top of the mountain. Like you, you need your friends at the top of the mountain with you to see to see those beautiful landscapes and things like that. Well, my man say, if you stand on my shoulders, you can see further than I can. Exactly. And if I trust you mm-hmm. to what you see, I can believe in your vision. Yes, that's real. And uh, so often we don't believe in each other's visions. Right. Uh, we're we're quick quick to criticize uh, your vision mm-hmm. and go with my vision. Yeah, with me, um, I'm I'm different in that. Yeah, you know, I'm I'm with your vision too. Yes. maybe your vision might be better than mine. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. Yeah. let's put our heads together and see whose vision is the best. Right. You know, I'm with I'm with the the notion of you know the best idea wins. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. I have an idea. You have an idea. Cass has an idea, and let's vote. I don't necessarily have to vote for my idea. Mine either. Exactly. I can do mine after we do yours. Exactly. Exactly. Because mine yeah. is forever. Exactly. You know, I'll be trying to get ideas that's going to last forever. Definitely. You know, and that's the way I base myself on now. I know that when I sold cocaine, I thought it was forever. Right. But I was fooling myself. Mm-hmm. How did you stay protected in those years? I just treated everybody like I wanted to be treated. You know, when when, when you when you fair with most people, most people respect somebody helping them. Definitely. Yeah, I mean there are a lot of us that because you help them, they think you soft and weak. Yeah, and, and, and they can take advantage of you. And they can take like advantage that. of you, but um, those people don't last that long. They don't. They don't. They don't go nowhere. Mm-hmm. You know, they they beat you yeah. quick. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like I had a partner one time. It's in the, it's in my book too, and I talk about him. He had just got out of jail, and I want to do something for him. Right. So he came to me today, and he was trying to get some dope. Okay. So the day he came. Something happened, and I guess I didn't have that much at that time. Mm-hmm. So I tell my little dude to give him a half a pound. Right. You know, half a pound. And my intention was to give him a whole kilo. Right, right, right. But I didn't have a whole kilo yeah, that day. Yeah, yeah. So I said, I'll just give him a half pound, give him the price that we get it for, right, right. tell him to bring that back. Mm-hmm. He didn't know that if he came back, the, the half a pound probably was worth mm, 16. Mm-hmm. The kilo was worth 40. Right. Right. So he took the 16 and ran when he could have came back and got 40. Yeah, I tell my partners all this, this all the time. It's like, I would rather take the short now and then be ready for the back end. Yeah, so often, though, we, we're money driven. Definitely. We're money driven. Mm-hmm. This society has been taught to take the money. Definitely. See, with me, I want the stick. Yeah. Give me the power. Mm-hmm. Because. Yeah. If you got that money and that's all you got, exactly. The guy with the stick yeah. can take the money. Take it from me. Now I got the stick and the power. I got the power, the money. Yeah, and then he just take the money again and go to somebody else and do the same thing. You want the money or the exactly. or the wisdom. Mm-hmm. And, and and that's what's happening right now with we're really like all of our technology, Definitely. all of our brilliance, uh, our entertainers, they're being controlled by these people. Continuously make money. They yeah. just print the money. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you you like money? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know. Yeah. Now don't go over there in your hood. Don't don't go talking to your right. people. Don't help them. Yeah. Don't do anything. Yeah. You can't. Mm-hmm. They gonna call you homie though. Yeah. Exactly. You ain't homie, but you can't go to the hood. Right. You know. And and for me, I got a problem with that. Yeah. Definitely. You know, I got a problem with somebody who comes into our community, get the money, mm-hmm. and never come back. Yeah. You know, who who get up off of our backs, um, but don't acknowledge it. Tell you right. to get yours like I got mine. Right. We've supported you for years. We've championed you for years. We loved you, and now you just turned your back on. As soon as some somebody else start to love you, yeah, we got more money mm-hmm. than us, mm-hmm. and I can give you way more than you ever thought about. I just, but we gave you everything. Yeah. We gave you them. We, we created you so you can go sell yourself to somebody else. I've been around it as well. I've never I've never sold drugs, but I lived in the community that all my big homies did. So I didn't have to. I didn't need to, I should say. You know, and somebody schooled you. Exactly. Somebody told you that it and, wasn't worth it. And should not even that. They showed me the wrong way to do it. They kept getting locked up. They kept getting knocked. They kept they was moving funny. 
Right, and right. I never wanted to be around it one because I know y'all don't know how to do what y'all doing. <laughs> <laughs> so why, why would I be like, hey, you know, why you know what? Same thing. And 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 I talk about that in my book how all the young dudes used to come to me in jail, yeah, and ask me why they didn't get rich selling cocaine. <laughs> why, huh? Why, huh? Yeah, that's what they said. <laughs> Man, why? Why was you so lucky? Right. Why was you able to make a million dollars a day and yeah. I couldn't get to ten thousand? <laughs> and then. That really, that really taught me a lesson too, that they didn't know the principles. Not at all, not at all. See, because it's principles of selling dope. I mean, it's principles of doing everything that we do, Definitely. and 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 that's what I had to learn is to not base my decisions on the product, but to base it on the principles. Yes, because that's way more important. Way more important. Because you can sell anything. Anything. Yeah. I have I'm really tapping into the to the poetry community. So we have we, I, this is Soul Tree Alchemy, um, 31st in MLK, Martin Luther King Jr. Way. And I did an event here called Indigo Vibes. It was spoken word R and B. And one of my one of my OGs, Upside Down Ghost, he did he has a poem and he has a piece of that he a line in it. He says, um, he says, every time I hear a dope fiend kid cry, I lose a little bit of myself in the fact that I saw crack, but not enough to say I cry. So like I said, like we, we were all around it, but we know, we knew that that wasn't the our way. calling. It wasn't for us. So when did you realize it was for you? When did you realize that I'm really good at this thing right here. Man, when my partner first told me about it and he showed me cocaine for the first time. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, I saw the movie Superfly too, so okay. that kind of like had me oh, yeah. had me primed up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? You yeah. see the brother, he beat the cops. You know what I'm saying? He Don't got touch him. hair on my pretty little head. <laughs> my goodness. He had the Cadillac yeah. with yeah. the big grill uh-huh. in it. So now that impressed me because yeah, I never saw a black man like that before. Mm-hmm. You know, he was before Louis Farrakhan. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So we didn't have nobody talking to white people like that. Right. Right. Muhammad Ali, you know, he yeah, used to yeah, talk yeah. to him rough too. <laughs> but when I go to the theater and I see this guy super fun, I'm like, damn, cocaine gave him that power. Right. Because right. you're talking about a young 15, 16 year old kid. Definitely. Who mine is impressionable, never read a book, mm-hmm. you know, never saw cocaine before, never knew a drug dealer. Right. You know what I'm saying? Now you see this guy up on the screen, bigger than life, mm-hmm. you know, like, wow, I want to be like him. Right. Wow. Mm-hmm. Wow. Off of Superfly. Why not? Yeah, right. Right. Who else I'm going to be like? That was, that was. I ain't going to be like the guy <laughs> at the liquor store. Yep. I seen that didn't work. Yeah. I got uncles and. Uh, died right. from alcohol, uh, uh, laying on the couch at my right. mom's house, slobbering out the mouth. Uh-uh, I don't want that. Right. I want to be priest. I want to be like priest. Yeah. I want to be fly. Yeah. I want to be super fly. I want to be super fly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's real. That's real. And I think, because I saw that movie when I, I'm years, years behind you, but when I saw that movie, um, it didn't, it didn't, I didn't want to sell drugs because of it, but it was like, yo, I can be black in America and still have the power and respect that he got. And like you said, I would rather have the stick than money. Yes. When. So in the movie, he had to, he had to stick. He did. He did. He did. Right. He had that stick. Mm Mm-hmm. Like, oh, y'all can do that. Mm-hmm. And doing my laundry ain't going to do you no good. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes. Don't do my laundry <laughs> thinking that's going to get you out of this. That's not going to do nothing. Yeah. It ain't going to do nothing for you. Mm-hmm. I got the power. I do. Yeah. I, I, I Look at this folder. Look at this folder I got for you. Yeah. <laughs> I, I know your, your your wife, your kids, all that. That was the power. Uh-huh. He's like, I got white boys that got a hit out on you. Yeah, so if you think I'm gonna get some clown Negroes, because I know y'all think we clowns. Right, right. Yeah, that's amazing. Look at this stick. Look how big it is. Feel it. 
You want to you want to really feel it, or you yeah. just want to touch it, so, right? So you know, uh, uh, I always try to deal from a position of power. I never want to go in as a victim. Yeah. And so often, uh, we as a people, we deal from a victim standpoint. You know, Definitely. we want to get food stamps. Mm-hmm. I don't want food stamps. Mm-hmm. Uh, we want welfare. Right. I don't want welfare. Right. We want to hit the lottery. I don't want to hit the lottery. Right, right, right. You know, if, if they came to me and 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 uh, wanted to give me the lottery, I don't want it mm-hmm. because it ain't the same feeling when yeah. you when you get out here and and you earn it for yourself, and right. you know that nobody gave it to you, that that you did it for yourself. Yeah. And they might take that from you. They can't take that from you. Right. You know, just like nobody can come and take my past. Right. For me, I love my past. Yeah. Even my 20 years I spent in prison. Mm-hmm. You know, it was hard when I was doing it. But at the end of the day, I appreciate the lessons that I learned while I was in prison, uh, going to court. Mm. I appreciate those moments because everybody has an experience that, right. you know, everybody don't know what it's like to go in court and deal with a federal judge, uh, lawyers. And I mean, the traffic court. <laughs> Total different. Yeah, Total exactly. Different. <laughs> you know, uh, to have a life sentence without the possibility of parole right. and, and feeling like you're never going to get out again. Uh, those are some, uh, some times that uh, I'll cherish for the mm-hmm. rest of my life. What are, what are those feelings when, you, when you're going through that? Is it and at it, at any point was there a peace to it? Uh, it? It's peace all the time. Okay, you know you you have to create your peace. A thousand percent. You know if 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 you don't create your peace, you won't have it. A thousand uh, percent. And I was able to while I was in prison create peace for myself mm-hmm. and and understand that um, and accept that. That may be my fate. Right. You know, that my fate may be that I stay in prison for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. But if I had to stay in prison for the rest of my life, what was the purpose? Right. You know, why should I be there? Um, And what I did is is I started reading and studying. You know, I started to analyze other things. One one of the worst things about being in prison is the emptiness Mm -hmm. to feel that you're worthless, you know, uh, one of the worst things I, I felt about being in prison was that if my mom got sick and needed me, I couldn't go. Right. Or if one of my kids got sick, right. I couldn't go. I couldn't be yeah. there. Uh, they're not going to let you out of prison to go not and, at all. and look out for mom. <laughs> not at all. You know, if you need to and get... And they've already taken everything from you, so... Yeah. If you need to give them a kidney or something to right. save a blood transfusion right. and they needed it that to live, they were going to die. Right. Because you would turn yourself in. Yeah. So uh, those are some of the things that, that I dealt with. Uh, I also felt, you know, the trumpet of learning how to turn my jail cell into a college hmm. uh, uh, dorm. Yeah. Uh, to to read and study and uplift myself. Right. And um, when I found out that I could uplift others from my jail cell, you know, felt good. When did you did you teach yourself how to read? I taught myself how to read. At what age? Uh, I started reading at 28. Okay. Okay. And how long did it take you to feel like you were proficient at reading? About two weeks, I was reading a newspaper. Okay. So just in that amount of time, the proficiency was expedient. I work with middle school kids, mainly with learning disabilities. So I'm I'm there in their classrooms all day. And we do uh, sustained solid reading, things like that. And... They will not sit there for two minutes and with their face in the book. It's almost like they're afraid to know how to read. Well, well, maybe not. To know how to read, maybe embarrassed. Okay. Maybe ashamed. Okay. That, that they don't know how to read. That they don't know how to read. Mm-hmm. Maybe low self-esteem. Right. It's definitely that. It's definitely uh, that. With me, what I found out my problem was is I never explained to nobody that I couldn't read. Mm-hmm. And they just kept passing you along. How did they pass you along? <clears throat> Well, if it was a test that needed to be done, I would cheat. Oh, of course. <laughs> of course. Yeah, I'd just look on somebody else's paper, find right, right. somebody else that passes every time. Right. And go to them and be like, give me all the answers. Right. They liked me. The of teacher liked me. So right. the teacher don't think I'm cheating. Mm-hmm. You know. Uh, uh, so uh, charisma got you through. Absolutely. Absolutely. Being able to deal with people, which is probably one of the most, invali- one of the most valuable skills that a person can have. Definitely. Because if you can um, 
get along with people, somebody might take care of you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I'm saying like you and I'm sure that, that helped in, in the drug game. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. They love a, 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 a charming personality. Yeah. You know, yeah. they love somebody that's not going to argue with them. Somebody that's not going to hate on them. Right. Somebody that's not going to prejudge them. Right. I couldn't judge nobody because I felt like I was a fool. Yeah, exactly. You know, so when cocaine came along, I felt that I was the luckiest man in the world. Mm-hmm. Finally, I got something that a dummy could do. Right. How did you get your first piece? My yeah. first dope? Yeah. How did you even? My friend. No, we're... Okay. My friend, Michael okay. McLuhan. Okay. Uh, gave me my first 50. Mm. Okay. To go and, and sample. Okay. I know exactly where it came from. Yeah. I ain't forgot that. <laughs> I never forget that. Right. Um, well, like I said, you know that's that's why I wrote this this book here. Yeah, uh, tell me the name of your book. Freeway Ricky Ross Untold Autobiography. Yes. And you wrote that in prison. I wrote this in prison when I had a life sentence without the possibility of parole uh, because I felt that it was so many youngsters mm-hmm. that didn't know why they were selling cocaine. <laughs> didn't know why. Because we just do stuff because everybody else did. Everybody else is doing it. We, we're in this environment. Yeah. Like, ain't this what I'm supposed to do? Right. And, I mean, almost like everybody rap right now. Right. right. You're not going to make a living at rapping. Not at all. They're only going to take maybe five or six of you throughout right. the whole country. Right, right. That they're going to pay. So mm-hmm. if you're a rapper and you don't figure out how to market yourself, yep. how to push yourself, mm-hmm. how to make yourself to be... Uh, the person that 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 you want to be, then you become at the mercy of somebody else who decides exactly. who's going to make it or not. Exactly. And the money doesn't come from the music. And after watching Harvey Weinstein, <laughs> you know we don't know what they might ask you to do. Right. You know. Right. They got what they call the casting couch. Yes. You know. Uh, um, so so you never know. So it's better if you do for yourself. Right. You know if you build up your own little fan base, mm-hmm. you know, and say, hey, I'm going to do this as a hobby, but at the same time, I'm going to have me a job Definitely. to uh, sustain my lifestyle, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. to take care of my family. Uh, but so often, you know, we put all of our eggs in one basket and say, you know, this is what I'm going to do. This is all I'm going to do. Yes. And uh, it just, you know, it just don't work out all the time. Definitely. Yeah, you stop. I, I said this on an episode. I'm like, we have enough rappers. We have enough rappers. If you want to make music, that's different. But if you want to be a rapper, it's not going to work for you. It might. It's a one in a billion chance and it might work. But I, I believe just like, do you, do you believe that we need more drug dealers? No, we don't. We, I, got, we got enough drug dealers. We have enough to, like, it's, it's oversaturated. Yeah, yeah. Especially with, with, Big pharmaceuticals, you know, selling hair run, right. hair They're run. the biggest drug dealers in the world. Absolutely. So we don't need more drug dealers. Um, we need more teachers. Yeah. I think teachers should get paid more. I agree. <laughs> um, I think teachers' assistants should get paid more as well. <laughs> for the, <laughs> for the to be in control of our most valuable resources, right. our most valuable assets, mm-hmm. And to treat them the way they be treated, yeah. it's no wonder that our kids mm-hmm. are in the shape that they're in. Yeah. You know, where a basketball player can get $30 million a year mm-hmm. and a teacher gets 44000 a year. It's great. You know, it's it's such a big disparity mm-hmm. um, that, I don't know, it, It's to me it's insane. Right. Yeah. So... You go, you go from having millions to being put in prison and it being stripped away from you. How did you get released? Well, I taught myself how to read. Okay. And then once I started reading, guys was telling me like, oh, you count on your lawyer <laughs> to win your case? He's like, yeah, that's what he's supposed to do, right? <laughs> yeah, I paid him a lot of money. Right. Exactly. He graduated from Harvard. Right, right. He's one of the best <laughs> in the country. Right. Can he get me out if it's possible? Right. And, and what they got me to understand is that anytime somebody else wants for you something that's good for you, right, more than you want it for yourself, then you're in trouble. Definitely. Definitely. 
So once he got me to understand that, then I understood that I had to want myself out of prison. Mm-hmm. Better than my lawyer wanted me out. And just once again, putting your life into someone else's hands. Yes. Mm-hmm. I was doing the same thing all over again. Right. So what I did is I took my, my, my life into my own hand and I started studying the law the way I sold drugs mm. all day, every day. Yeah. You know, everything in, nothing out. Right. right. And um, eventually uh, I found the issues that um, that allowed me to be here with you today. Beautiful. It's beautiful. So your second book. Yeah. What's the title? <laughs> Riding with Rick, The 21 Keys of Success. Um, I love that. I love that title. The book uh, looked like it's going to sell better than my first book. I, I didn't know it was going to do that well. We didn't even plan on doing this book. This really? was not a planned uh, endeavor. Mm. Uh, this just kind of came came about. You know, just me with my entrepreneur senses, you yeah. know, just kicked in. Uh, my man, Cody, okay. who is my co-writer. Um, I met Cody when I was in jail. He wrote me. And he had a magazine called Get Money. So he was like, man, I want to put you on the cover of my magazine. Epic. And I was like, what's the name of it? He said, Get Money. I was like, oh, yeah, I should be on the cover of that. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Definitely. Um, Get a green suit. <laughs> man, the picture that he did for that cover has is, is been all over the internet. Okay. So we agreed. I came. He sent for me to come to New York. Right, right. Bought me a suit. We, we did the photo shoot, everything. Mm-hmm. And I was there a couple of days. And. Uh, we going around selling T-shirts. You know, I had the T-shirt. Right, right, right. The real Rick Ross is not a rapper. And uh, <laughs> when I got ready to leave, he was like, man, I ain't ready for you to go. Yeah. And I'm like, man, I'm on parole. Man, I got to go. <laughs> I have to, yeah. I got to go. So he's like, man, what if I come to New York? I mean, come to L.A. for a couple mm-hmm. months and just kick it with you, ride around with yeah. you. Yeah. And you see the title, Ride with Ride Rick. Ride Rick, yeah. So I said, oh, I ain't got no problem with that because I didn't have no friends. Yeah, exactly. I just got out of prison during right, 20 right. years so I don't really know nobody mm-hmm. and ain't nobody on my on my wavelength you exactly. know my friends are not thinking the way I think exactly. um, so he came out and you know he's going with me to all these meetings in Hollywood yeah, yeah. we meet the biggest movie producers and all that and I look up he had been scribbling in his pad all the time I was like man what you been That's doing that's a real writer right there he's like oh man I just been taking notes yep I said man you've been taking notes yeah. of everything that's been happening yes I said, man, that's a book. Yep. So, so that's how the book came about. That's amazing. I actually, I wrote down a few of them that really spoke to me. So I just want to really quick run down, run down the list and then give a little bit of insight. No doubt. I, I'll do that. So the first one is health consciousness. Absolutely. Why was that? It's number one, right? It should be, yeah. Yeah, because if you're not healthy, you don't have nothing. Right. You know, if you're sick, uh, one of my favorite books, uh, As a Man Thinks, says that the rich man mm-hmm. would give up all of his money mm-hmm. for just five more minutes of life. Right. So, uh, but he refuses to give up his glutton mm-hmm. habits. Right. You know, he won't right. give up those foods. That, that drives killing. them to the grave. Yeah. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And uh, that just stuck with me so, so heavily that... Uh, right. We refuse to to quit glutton, Definitely. and we're not going to take care of ourselves. So, uh, yeah, that's that's it's a great one, and that's important. I put that at the top because this is a mental health podcast. So that that mental health, you without it, you don't have anything. No, if you don't care about now, you don't care about anything. Yeah, you don't want anything. You know, and uh, that mental fortitude that you had within you to be. I said, I'm here for the rest of my life. And it didn't happen. You, right. You willed yourself out of prison. Absolutely. But that's the way we have to fight mental right. illness. You know, people who have mental illness mm-hmm. have to take it upon themselves mm-hmm. to fight that sickness Definitely. that uh, that they've been inflicted with. Right. You know, right. Uh, uh, and you can't give up, mm-hmm. you know, and turn to alcohol and cigarettes and cocaine. Because right. a lot of times that's what it is. They're, they're, they're trying to hide. From their sickness, Definitely. and and I believe that, that we should meet our sickness head on and not be embarrassed of uh, having problems yeah, because it's you. Nobody's perfect. Exactly. Exactly. Next one. Be a man of the people. <clears throat> these are. <laughs> I feel like I wrote this book. <laughs> these are these are my principles. Before even reading this book, these have been the principles that I've stood on my whole life, and I've said it. 
be a man of the people. My my homegirl is a uh, is a painter. She painted me this piece. She said the um the the soul of a king, but the heart uh, of a servant. Oh, that's dope. I'm for I'm for I, I serve I I'm for you to you know like you said you can stand on my shoulders. Tell me what the view is. Right. Why is that important to you? To be able to see the view. Mm-hmm. To, to further be a man of your people. Be oh, a man of your people. Oh man, without without the people, there's nothing. Yeah. You know, um, that goes back to what we were saying. It's like we we made you. We made you. Yeah. You know, I mean, there there's some things that I found out with with how people without a woman, mm. a man <laughs> doesn't want to exist. Yeah. He's not complete. Yeah. He's not whole. Uh without a team, <laughs> he's not whole, he's yeah. not complete. You know, you're empty. Right. So we need each other <laughs> in more ways than we know we do. Uh, uh, we're not loners, right. you know, we're not the kind of, uh, creatures that can just go out by themselves in the desert right. and, and be happy. We need to be around people. Yeah. We'll at least like find a coyote or something. <laughs> <to hang out. laughs> a dog, yeah, a so, deer or yeah, something, yeah. you know? So we need people or, or, or things yeah. to connect to. So we need to be connected. Yeah. Make your name carry weight. <laughs> that's, the, that's, that's having that stick. Yeah, I mean, uh, um, I got to do right by him. Yeah, you know, because yeah. he's gonna do right by me. Right, and if I don't do right by him, that just means that I'm a sucker. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. That I'll sell out. Mm-hmm. You know, I'll take the first thing that come through right. and be happy with it. You right, know? right. Um, uh, <laughs> my balls and my word. <laughs> Why is that important? I swear. <laughs> I swear. I mean, if your word is no, I should, I'm going to scribble my name at the bottom. Of it. <laughs> <With some. laughs> if your word is no good, yeah, then you're no good. Exactly. Because we will say more things yeah. than we can do. <laughs> uh, me, I try to understate right and do more. Do more. Yeah. So they'll be like. Damn, he did more than what he was supposed to do. Yeah, yeah. I tell, this is my brother. I tell him all the time, I say, I say yes to so much. And then when it comes down to the to the moment I have to do it, it's like, I didn't know I was going to feel like this. <laughs> Real talk. I, yeah, but, but, I, but I do it. I, I might put off more and not the truth. Exactly. Yeah. But, I, but I still show faith because that's what I, I'm a man of my word. Yeah. I said I'll be here even when... And- and there's plenty of us that 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 make mistakes, you know, and, and plan on doing something that we can't do. Right. Uh, uh, and we have to retract our words. Definitely. But at the end of the day, uh, you call the people and let them know that I tried. People. I said we had a conversation. Shout out to Six Foot, the poet, the, uh, the poet. We had a discussion last night about loyalty. Mm-hmm. And I said, if, I said those exact same words. I was like, be where you say you're going to be, when you say you're going to be there, do what you say you're going to do. And if things change, you communicate it. Right. Communicate the change. So there's no hard feelings. Absolutely. So my next one is uh, disdain instant gratification. And that's really important with this social media world. You get all Ooh, the everything. Yeah. You know, because a lot of people... What, what I saw them do in, in, in the cocaine business, as soon as they made some money, they go buy a brand new car. Right. They go buy some new tennis shoes, right. new pair of pants, right, right, right. some jewelry, you know, uh, uh, and that's instant gratification mm-hmm. when they should have been saying, you know what, I'm going to go buy this business yep. and this business is going to buy the car and then the business is going to buy the jewelry and then mm-hmm. the business is going to buy another business mm-hmm. and the business is going to buy my house. Mm-hmm. You know, and so forth and so on. And now I can buy all the jewelry you know, I want. Exactly. I have Illegally. Yes. I have passive income. Exactly. All the time. Compartmentalized focus. I see that. I always hear, you know, you got to focus on one thing and it's going to work. I read it. I read it in your book. It said, the, what, I, I don't want to misquote it, but the, the things, the many, you know, meaningless things or the things that don't add up all really do add up to a bigger goal. Well, to the people who are looking from the outside, right. they don't add up. Right, right. But to the person who is painting the picture mm-hmm. with all those little dots, yes. those little dots start to form mm-hmm. a, a shape. Mm-hmm. And when you first see them start, you may not understand it. But after the artist is finished mm-hmm. putting all the dots in, you'll be like, oh, that's himself. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you you leave for like an hour, come back, and it's like, oh. 
Now I understand. Yeah, now right. I can see. Right. But for those people who it take them so long to see, a lot of times they get left out mm-hmm. because if you can't see from the beginning, then it's time to make a move. Yeah. You don't make the move because you didn't see. Yeah, exactly. And then it'd be like, "Oh, you too late. Mm-hmm. We done moved on." Mm-hmm. Gain independence by not working for money. That's what we talked about. Yeah, yeah. It's so important that uh, you don't put money first. You know, so many people, they put money the first thing that they do. And they make a decision, oh, ain't no money there. I ain't going to do it. Right. You know, uh, I even remember one time reading in the newspaper uh, that it was a lady went to the hospital when she was sick. Right. And the doctor came out and the nurses came out and they was like, uh, she got insurance? Mm. And they was like, no. <laughs> she got a credit card? Right. No. She got some cash? <laughs> No, they all turned and walked away. What can we do? Yeah, exactly. The lady died there in the waiting room. Yeah. And a doctor's job is not to uh, make money. Right. His job should be to save lives. Exactly. That's what they took the oath to do. Yeah. To heal. Exactly. Yeah. Say your say the, the, the title again. Uh, Riding with Rick, 21 uh, Keys of Success. You yes. can get it at my website, both of these books. Also, you can get my sweatshirts, my clothes yes. at uh, FreewayRickyRoss.com. Also, follow me on social media, Freeway Ricky. Yes. Come get the game. I'm giving it up. Don't cost you much, but it's going to cost you something. Because yeah, I don't want to be messing with no slackers. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. If you can't buy a $20 book, uh, Something wrong with you. Something wrong with you, right? You really need to get the book. <laughs> you, need, you know yeah. what I'm saying? You need to go to the library, borrow the book, right. read it. Exactly. Figure out how to get you 20 bucks so you can buy you one. Definitely. Definitely. Um, so now, moving forward, you are putting your foot in different areas of, of this new game. Absolutely. So you, you becoming in the marijuana industry. Yeah, yeah. I just wanted a dispensary in Los Angeles. Okay. Uh, What's matter of name? fact, I'm here today at Nugs. Okay. Uh, uh, doing a, a, a signing at, at Nugs store. Uh, San Leandro. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. We we doing a partnership. Hopefully. Okay. I'm trying to work out a partnership deal for my yeah. own brand. I started my own brand. Okay. With no money, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I got in there, and worked it, but I studied, yeah. learned the game, right. figured out what it was that people wanted right. from me. That would allow me to partner with somebody with the money. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So tell me a little bit about what areas in the game are you going to take over? What what products you have for the people? Right now, I got vape pens okay. uh, and I got pre rolls. Okay. I came out with first. Okay. I also want a dispensary license in L.A. Nice. So I will have my own dispensary soon. So. so you guys be able to come to L.A. And Definitely come, come down, down to L.A. My dispensary. Yeah. And get your flower. Definitely. At the right price. The right <laughs> flower. You yeah. know, I'm going to do it just right. Yeah. You know what you're doing? You know what you're doing? You yeah. got to. Yeah, I want to do it just right. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, go to Nug. Go to Nug and San Leandro today. Yeah. Come out at your boy. Get a book. I'm going to yeah. have my books over there, both of them. You get an autograph. Get a picture. You know what I'm saying? And chop it up with your boy. Beautiful. Beautiful. You're also executive producing shows. Yeah, I got a reality show I'm work with two reality shows I'm working okay. with. Okay. One uh, uh, about the dispensary mm. uh, business, you know, how, okay. how to get in. And then I'm doing another one called Street Bosses, where I'll be going around helping guys when they get out of prison, mm. help them get on their feet. That's so important. We, we need that. Yeah. We fighting crime. <laughs> yeah. Because if I help a guy be successful, mm-hmm. he don't have to go back to prison. Mm-hmm. And that mean that the police can go get somebody who did something wrong. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Leave me alone. And what was that transition like? How did it, How did you stay out of trouble once, or did you stay out of trouble once you got released? Well, you know, once my, my only problem was selling cocaine. Mm-hmm. You know, once okay. I had figured out that cocaine wasn't <laughs> what I thought it was, yeah. you know, um, I wouldn't have no more problems. Yeah, real, real. So you only take me. You only take, have to take me out my house one time. Yeah, <laughs> I found out that this cocaine wasn't. Yeah. you know, oh, this don't work. Mm-hmm. Did you ever try to get out the game? I quit before I went to prison. <sighs> yeah, I quit a year and a half before I went to prison. Ain't that the worst? Like when your girl catch you and you like, I don't, I'm not even cheating. <laughs> I'm not even cheating on you no more. What you talking about? <laughs> well, you know, with the feds, they can go back seven years. Of course. So of course, of course. And it all happened so quickly. You said eight years. Yeah, I, I sold drugs eight years. Right. And at what point, at what year did you reach that peak? It was like, hey, this is the most money I've ever... Uh, probably like 
84-ish, 85, 86 was, okay. my, was my best years. Okay. Okay. And you got some flack on Instagram a couple, it was a couple weeks ago. Yeah, man. Tell they, us what happened. Because well, this is crazy. Well, well you know. You uh, told me about this. I can't believe it. Michael uh, Bloomberg, I think. Yeah, Bloomberg, right? yep. He came down to Compton. Right. And uh, I get a call from the mayor of Compton. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, Bloomberg is going to be in town. Right. Um, he's talking about doing a lot of things for the community. Okay. And Compton needs a lot of help. You know, Definitely. Along with Los Angeles. Definitely. And uh, I knew who Michael Bloomberg was. Right, right, right. And I already knew that he was worth $58 billion or know, 60. That, that name alone was worth billions. Yeah, $60 billion or something yeah. like that. And I also had saw some commercials and him talking about putting money back into the commu- black community. Right, right, right. Um, I also saw it where he apologized for the stop and frisk. Hmm. Wow. So They don't talk about that, though. Well, yeah, it's on. It's online, and it's it's been on TV. No, I'm talking about. I'm talking about us. We don't talk about. We don't talk about the fact that it's like all we talk about is oh, he did stop and frisk. Right. He apologized. Also, he also apologized, and he wants to make up for like the mistake the that he yes. made. So yes. when 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 I heard that, my next move is let him prove it. Yeah, I know where I, where he could put the money. Yeah, I, yeah, exactly. I'm mm-hmm. like, well, if he gave me a billion dollars. I could create so many jobs for the black community that Definitely. it would be crazy. Uh, uh, in my neighborhood. Too. In my neighborhood. Right. We could start building houses, apartment right. buildings, right. and all kind of stuff with that billion dollars. Definitely. Or, or maybe give me $10 billion. <laughs> yeah, really. Give me $10 billion. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Let me work. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to pay you back. Yeah. <laughs> Matter of fact, we're going to make it grow. Yeah. We're going right. to help you get to $70 billion. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I just felt that it was important that that uh, that I get in. I, I mean, it's important for me to get involved with politics, definitely. Because what happens is these people get voted in, mm-hmm. and then they do nothing for us, definitely. You know, uh, I, I saw the black community just give away they they votes. Right. I mean, we give away everything. We yeah. give away our cash. Yep. We trade our, our cash friends. for for tennis shoes, yep. for uh, pants, for hats, for jackets, mm-hmm. and. We get nothing in return. Right. We give our vote away. Right. You know, people are going to probably get mad at me for saying this about Obama, mm-hmm. but we all voted Obama in, yep. and he didn't do nothing specifically for us. He never said that, I'm going to do something for blacks. Right. We just wanted him because he looked like us. Because he looked like us. Right. Well, it's time out for just putting people in because they look like us. Right. We need people who at least say they're going to do something for us. Now, maybe Michael Bloomberg, he may not, he may do nothing for us. Yeah, just give it, just but at saying, least, giving us. But at least he's saying he is. If a person don't say they're going to do nothing, right. you know what they're going to do. Yeah, they don't even have it on their mind. They don't even have it on their mind. So. <laughs> lie to me. <laughs> lie to me. At least. Yeah, you a politician lie. Dude. At <laughs> least lie to me. Yeah. You know, and, then, and, then, and the fact that he came to the hood. Yeah, that's real. You know what I'm That's saying? Right. Like he stepped on that soil. He stepped on the soil in right. the hood, and to me, uh, that, that spoke volumes. Yeah. So I had to go out and at least ask him, "Was he bullshitting? Yeah, exactly. Or are you serious? So from you, is he bullshitting? Well, I don't know. I'm waiting to okay. see. You know what I'm saying? And the uh, uh, the proof is in the pudding, and right. and you know the pudding is still cooking. Mm-hmm. Uh, when you had the conversation with him, could you? Because I know him, you're you're great character analysis. I feel that he's sincere. Okay. Uh, I don't think that he he necessarily needs to lie to anybody. Okay. Um, he's wealthy as almost anybody in the country. Yeah. yeah. You know, he can buy anything that he wants. Yes. I think they, they most of the politicians are mad now because he spent about $200 million on ads. Right. You right. know. Uh, and he's funding that from his pocket. From his pocket. And he also said that Whoever wins the nomination, he's going to back them. So wow. I'm going to look to see that. Like yeah. right now, he's fighting with them. Right. But he's saying that if he doesn't win and Bernie Sanders is the leader, then right. he's going to back Bernie Sanders right. and he's going to give him money or right. whoever that, That's what he that, that person is. So I would take that as a sign of his truthfulness. Right, right. So, yeah. So Bloomberg and Freeway Rick Ross, it you can't judge a man's past. No, you can't. You got to give him a chance. Right. Because if they did, I would still be a crack dealer. Exactly. Exactly. I appreciate you for coming on this podcast. I appreciate you having me. Thanks. And we had an interesting conversation. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> uh, we, I like to give my listeners 
something to think about until they hear my voice again. So this segment's called The Diagnosis. <laughs> <laughs> It's my favorite part of the show. No doubt. It's my favorite yeah. part of the show. Enjoy yourself. Yeah. It's your show. It's creating creating your peace. When you were when you were locked up, you had to you had to fortify your mind in a in a in such a state to where all the hell that you were put through didn't affect you to where it broke your spirit. I know. Or your mind. It it made you stronger and it made you strive for more and it it created the man that I'm sitting next to right now. Yes, it did. Creating your peace, fortifying your peace. And my next one, man, we all have the ability to change. We all have the ability to change. Our tomorrows is for change. You don't have to be the same person you was yesterday. And give people the grace to change. Don't just take one mistake that I made and hold it over my head for the rest of my life. Or shit. The five, six, seven mistakes. I'm gonna keep making mistakes, but am I genuine? Am I is my heart in the right place? Mm. That's dope. Shout out your your books one more time. Shout out your Instagram. Anywhere we can find you. Your website. Twenty one keys of success. Freeway Ricky Ross untold autobiography. You can get them both at my website. Freeway Ricky Ross. Follow me on Instagram at Freeway Ricky. I'm gonna be looking at the numbers. And you know, I tell everybody, I wrote these books for y'all. But y'all ain't gonna read them until Oprah Winfrey tell you to. <laughs> Shout out to Soul Tree Alchemy, man. It's it's beautiful, beautiful healing space. Soul Tree Alchemy MLK. If you want to look at it on Instagram, Soul Tree Alchemy on Instagram. <laughs> I'm sure it's SoulTreeAlchemy.com. Um, shout out to the Defy Life Podcast Network, Black Owned Podcast Network. You're on right now. Oh, that's dope. Yeah. So we're making black history all, all, all year long, all lifelong. So best man pot is your man Simba Roar back in this thing thing one more time, bro. And we out. Peace. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.